Group A streptococcus, also known as streptococcus pyogenes, is the most common bacterial cause of acute tonsillitis. Here is a mouth with pharyngotonsillitis, inflammation of both the pharynx and the tonsils. Here is a photo of bacterial tonsillitis. Pharyngotonsillitis caused by group A streptococcus is sometimes referred to as strep throat. The majority of episodes of pharyngitis are caused by viral infections, which are usually treated conservatively. However, early recognition of streptococcus pyogenes is important, since failure to appropriately treat strep throat may lead to group A streptococcus complications. Unfortunately, distinguishing between viral and bacterial uh, causes can be difficult. The group A streptococcus are beta hemolytic cocci, able to produce some exotoxins and also contain many surface antigens that play a vital role in the pathophysiology, uh, such as the M proteins. Transmission of strep throat is through saliva and nasal secretions from an infected person. Here, group A streptococcus targets palatine tonsils. However, it's also important to remember group A streptococcus is an important commensal organism as well meaning that a lot of people have group A streptococcus normally residing in their oral cavity and nasal cavity. The incubation period of strep throat is usually two to five days of no symptoms. When symptoms do arise, bacterial tonsillitis causes sudden onset fevers, sore throat, pharyngitis, and tonsillitis, which uh, is uh, reddening of the tonsils, enlargement, and perlin exudate. On the soft palate, you can also see palate petechiae. Here again is a photo of strep throat. Note the enlarged tonsils and exudate in yellow. Other features include dysphagia, difficulty swallowing, odanophagia, pain when swallowing, and tender cervical lymphadenopathy. On physical examination, the pharynx is red tonsils are red and enlarged with perlant exudate. A throat swab can be performed. A throat swab with microscopic culture and sensitivity in blood agar will help diagnose group A streptococcus because it will show a beta hemolytic cocci. The throat swab for rapid antigen detection test, RADT, can also be used. In general though, throat swabs are not very useful because remember, group A streptococcus are commensal organisms in many people. Other investigations include a full blood count, which will show neutrophilia, high neutrophils. It's an important concept to remember to help differentiate viral and bacterial tonsillitis. Remember, lymphocytosis supports a viral cause of acute tonsillitis, whereas neutrophilia supports more of a bacterial cause. Early recognition and management is important to reduce the complications associated with group A streptococcus throat infection. The management of streptococcus throat infection is antibiotics, specifically penicillins or amoxicillin. It's also important to monitor for complications of the antibiotics. Firstly, if a rash eruption occurs, think to yourself, could this be a virus penicillin reaction, which will support a diagnosis of Epstein-Barr virus tonsillitis rather than a bacterial tonsillitis, in which case the antibiotics should be stopped. The second thing to think about is whether this could be a proper allergic reaction to the penicillin, in which the antibiotics should be changed. Thirdly, another differential for rash eruption with someone who has strep throat and has been commenced on antibiotics is scarlet fever. Antibiotics is first-line treatment. However, for people with recurrent tonsillitis or severe tonsillitis, surgery to remove the tonsils is indicated. This is called tonsillectomy. Other complications of group A streptococcus specifically can be divided into superative complications and non-superative complications. Superative complications include peritonsillar abscess, parapharyngeal space abscess, or retropharyngeal abscess, sinusitis where the uh, infection extends to the sinuses, 
as well as acute otitis media, the infection spreads up the eustachian tube into the middle ear cavity. Cellulitis and empatigo of different regions uh, around the mouth as well as the ear. Meningitis, a serious complications, as well as osteomyelitis and septic arthritis, another very serious complication. The superative complications of group A streptococcus is because the bacteria is able to spread from its initial location, mounting an immune response and inflammation elsewhere. The non-superative complications of group A streptococcus is usually a result of exotoxins and M proteins of the bacteria. For example, an immune cell called the antigen-presenting cell can engulf the bacteria group A streptococcus and present the M protein of the bacteria to the adaptive immune system made up of the T cells and B cell. It will present the M protein antigens to these guys in the lymph nodes, for example, so that they can mount an immune response towards the M protein. When the adaptive immune system is activated, the B cells, which are your antibody producing cells, will start making antibodies against the M proteins. Unfortunately, the M proteins share similar structure to many other cells in our body and can also trigger unnecessary immune complex formation and response elsewhere. This can result in rheumatic fever when the antibodies start attacking the body's own cells through molecular mimicry. The antibodies produced against the group A streptococcus antigens can form immune complexes and also accidentally attack the kidneys, causing post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. The antibodies against M proteins can also cross-react with the heart structures, leading to rheumatic heart disease. Finally, exotoxins produced by group A streptococcus can lead to scarlet fever. I hope you enjoyed this overview video of group A streptococcus throat infection, also known as strep throat. Thank you.